Lesson 1.5. This is it. Westward expansion. Mr. Knorris here and with our chief engineer, Ms. Kate, in the background. <laughs> She's waving hysterically saying, stop, stop. This is a bad idea. Sorry, Ms. Kate, we're going ahead with we're this. We're moving on. Westward expansion. Why you shouldn't go out west. Yep, you shouldn't. And why a bunch of people did go way out back west. Then, way back in the And what they needed to do that. That's right. So uh, this is on page 15 of your notebooks. Uh, this is Mr. Panka providing you with the play-by-play. -play. And Mr. Knorr with the color to his left. The climate and geography of the Great Plains. So we helped you out here with a little mnemonic to help you with remembering this. Flat lands that rise slowly from the east to the west. It's a constant climb upward. So you might think that the toughest place to go biking in America would be the Rocky Mountains. You'd be wrong. Great Plains, nothing but hill. No relief. From constant. the east to the west. And by the way, when we're doing this, you may find it uh, useful uh, over on the left-hand page, the processing page, uh, any drawings that help you remember this stuff. So this here is that it is constant climb and you might get a soda or something too while you're doing it. you might want to flatlands that rise from the east to the west a constant climb little rainfall happening out there it's dry it is dry it was dry but right now it's still dry we didn't change anything let's see that little girl over there on the picture thing so that they can know Example of a uh, little rainfall, a little Native American girl, her brother Buffalo Chip, uh, not in the picture. And this is a uh, historically accurate uh, depiction, depiction of a very real character. Right. She had in one no way, shorter. In no way did we just make this person up just to remember the uh, little rainfall no. idea. No. It was a very real... No, I, don't know. I think that's wrong. Little rainfall happening out there, no water for drinking or for crops. So there's little rainfall happening out there in the Great Plains. Most of it is because the uh, all that the storms and rain coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, they just can't make it up that far, and they pretty much just peter out before they make it to the Great Plains. So Except it stays for the pretty wind. dry. Except for the wind. The wind makes it, and uh, we have erosion from wind and water. So we have wind coming in from one direction. We have water rolling down from the the Rocky Mountains in the other direction, and a lot of uh, soil gets eroded and worn down over time ground so hard that whenever it does rain it just cuts it up rather and rolls off the top it eventually tears up the ground now we'll see that later on uh, in the in uh, the next century in the 20th century when you over farm and you get rid of that grass that holds the the roots hold the soil in place you get dust storms on a massive scale so a uh, quick peek at what that looks like so I'm all right Bum bum bum! Dust storm approaching Spearman, Texas. Put on your goggles. And by the way, this is an example of what that erosion might look like looks wearing like things my yard. away. Yeah. Gotta do better with the water. Dust storms. So why would you go out there? I don't know. Makes no sense. None to me. Treeless wasteland. Wasted. The land is trying to kill you. It's garbage. And yet, they're giving it away. Yep. So mostly to kind of help. Uh, get people out there because if people are out there the railroad has a reason to go out there places to stop go to the bathroom get some food so if you settle the west it helps to pay make the way for the trains to go out all the way to california and gives you a reason to connect them so land ownership opportunities that's a long way without a bathroom that's a long way with no place to stop for potty so they gave the land away some folks they don't care about that they just do it for the adventure of it yep Wee! It's fun. It is fun. Unless you're the one doing it. When nature's trying to kill you, it's a rollicking good time. It's great. Also, the railroad and technological improvements. What's that word? What's that mean? Technology. So this happens actually today with things like the iPhone. and. Uh, they had that back then? When the iPhone is trying to get you to buy stuff, they uh, it kind of paves the way for new technologies and uh, advances in the railroad at the time was uh, paving the way for development and they were trying to get people to go out there and you know what I'm just rambling now that's okay the iPhone has nothing to do with this gold and silver I understand that one gold and silver uh, not quite uh, what's going on out there they're 
There is some gold out there in them there hills, but mostly it's the idea of getting gold. And so we learned this last year in sixth grade. The only guy to really make a lot of money off of the gold rush in San Francisco was Levi Strauss because he sold pants yep. to the suckers who were trying to find That's the gold. A smart guy. Right. Because they needed those. He zigged when they zagged. So gold and silver, but people went out there thinking that there would be gold uh, in the, the Black Hills of the Lakota, the land promised of the Lakota, because there was some gold found, uh, we started to try and move them off that land. And the end of slavery. Yeah, so if you, are, if you are a newly freed African American and you're surrounded by uh, the Ku Klux Klan, maybe move out of the neighborhood and find a new place to live. Yeah. So they're giving away land. Uh, so the end of slavery is a, is a big reason for going out west. Many African Americans could find a new start out there. Uh, they also called them uh, exodusters. Mr. Knorr, exodusters, where the heck does that come from? Uh, the dictionary. Exactly, where all things come from. It's where it all begins. Uh, Exodus, you may know as either a, a, a book in the Bible or a Bob Marley album, means to get out of there, Exodus. And then it's dusty out there, so exodusters. Sounds Man, good. that's clever. Yes. So that's why they went and why they shouldn't have gone. So that's why nobody was there. That was first so part, dangerous. Hey, that's why it was available. Nobody and wanted to go. Obviously, my circles are amazing. Yeah, too much coffee. So how do they do it? This is the why they shouldn't, why they wanted to, how do they survive? So these are the top eight technologies that you need to survive out there in the Great Plains. Uh, we'll tell you the invention, the problem that it solved, its impact. Uh, on the right-hand side, the right-hand column, we'd like you to rank them from one to eight. Which one do you think is the most important of these? I think the bathrooms. Is that in here? Uh, bathrooms are everywhere. But except on trees, because there are no trees out there. It's almost a treeless wasteland. Top of the list, railroads. railroads. You can't live out there if you can't get out there. That's and right. the uh, most people don't want to go the Conestogal wagon route. Your axle breaks, your kid gets dysentery, uh, all that kind of stuff that you've... That's bad. Yeah, it's bad stuff. So the railroad makes it possible for most people to get out there and live. Sod houses. Sod houses. Yeah, uh, there's no wood out there. No wood out there. There's sod, grass, dirt. So Those ought to look nice. That's free. Those are beauties. The advantage of the sod house is while it's raining, you can stay dry inside, give it a couple hours, and it'll start raining inside. Because right. uh, as we all know, dirt, not very waterproof. Yeah, but it's fireproof, and it keeps you cold in the uh, summer and warm in the winter. And wet when it's raining. Right. The windmill. You may have seen a lot of these things. Uh, windmills, people have them sometimes. They look good, but many times it's uh, it's actually a very necessary thing. If you want to go out and pump some water, uh, if you've ever seen hand pumps, you can hand pump water from a well, but if the well has to go uh, really deep down, you don't want to be hand pumping that stuff. You want that stuff uh, being pumped automatically. Well, you don't have electricity yet, so what do you use? Your sun. You use your sun. <laughs> or the windmill. Or the windmill. So the windmill is a uh, is being powered by the wind. It's constantly being pumped because there's plenty of wind out there, and uh, that allows you to have your water dug in a very deep well, brought up for your crops, animals, and maybe for your kids. They used to have those over in Dutchland, didn't they? Deutschland? Yeah, there too. Steel plow. Yeah, well, the iron didn't work. It wasn't good enough. Wooden plow, rock plow, forget it. Nothing's going to work. Nothing's going to cut through that sod. Except steel plow. Yeah. Brought to you by our friend... At Steel Plows. John Deere. Oh. John Deere made the first uh, steel plow. Steel plow, by coincidence, name of my uh, rock band that I was a part of in uh, college. Steel plow. Steel plow! John Deere was the name of my rock band. I'm surprised we didn't I get think, together. I think we should have opened for you guys. Steel plow. Cuts through the ground, uh, allows you to get through that, that rough, dry soil to get to the good stuff underneath it. Dry farming. Because there is uh, very little water, you need a technique that allows you to uh, dig down deep. So the steel plow is a part of dry farming. So, they, so they dig down deeper than normal and plant deeper, huh? That's right. Where the water is still sitting in there in the nice, dark, wet ground. 
It also involves using snow because uh, snow does not run downhill until it melts. So uh, in the winter time, that snow can lay on the soil. As it melts slowly, sometimes it seeps into the soil. So if you give uh, one of your fields enough time to absorb some snow, that's also a part of dry farming. So walks in the winter and runs in the summer. There you go. Wheat. Uh, wheat is uh, a crop not native to North America. It's from uh, the Mediterranean area. It's the reason why Egypt and Rome and Greek were, uh, Greece were able to thrive because wheat can stand uh, harsh summers, harsh winters. You can store it over the years. And so wheat is kind of the, uh, the most durable crop. The food of kings, That's you could what say. I call it. Beef cattle. There are other kinds? There are other kinds, and this one is the most rugged one. In, in fact, uh, if you see those longhorns, many universities and uh, Texas. Texas, they have this as their symbol. It means that it's a, uh, this is a tough cow. It's yep. hard to kill. Yep, and it's got beef, and it had a lot of area to eat off of because there was lots of land out there. By the way, this is also why Chicago uh, is the place where we have uh, meat packing, because Chicago is uh, the city that has access to inland ports, but it's also got access to the uh, all those cows in the Midwest. So, beef cattle. They'd go there on vacation. It's what's for dinner. Barbed wire. I, I dated her. Barbed wire? Yeah. She's a tough one. Uh, you don't have trees to create fences, but some guy invents uh, barbed wire. Using a coffee grinder. Using a coffee grinder. You take two wires, you put some barbs in the wires, and then you... Uh, Crank it, turn it, and you get barbed wire. I knew kids that used to put Barbie dolls in the barbed wire. Nope, it's not how it works. No. Common misconception. Barbed wire, so it creates cheap fences so your animals can stay either out of your uh, out of your yard or in your yard, depending on what you want. Works both ways. Your mood. Keeps them out, keeps them in. Barbed wire! That's my other rock band in college. Seal plow! So on the left-hand side, uh, with your own time, we'd like you to uh, just draw some little brain tricks to help you with remembering fled and large. On the bottom, some pictures to help you with uh, what the eight technologies were. So, so this is Mr. Pekka. And Bob. Hey, Bob, welcome. Thanks. I'm sure glad Mr. Kenora left. Me too. All right. Signing off. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow or whenever we see you. Yeah. Bye.